Let me uh, real quick read the title, uh, which is a review of risk perception methodologies and empirical studies focused on risk from chemicals released from consumer products and articles, and point out uh, the uh, co-authors on this, um, Holger Schütz and Peter Wiedemann of the Research Center Ulich, uh, and also our project supporters, Carlos Del Pozzo and Demosthenes de Papalometio of uh, the Joint Research Center in Ispra, Italy, specifically of the Institute for Health and uh, Consumer Protection. Uh, this is a meta-analysis at best or a simple review that I'm going to uh, be talking about. And um, in order to fit what, I'll, what I wanted to discuss uh, with uh, you on this problem statement uh, into the context of uh, this workshop, I went back and thought, um, what, what is it that we analyzed in our project and what is it that fits uh, with this, uh, the goals of this, uh, uh, this workshop uh, to uh, look at the key variables and to look at appropriate instruments. Well, obviously, applications of emerging technology will be and are currently incorporated into various consumer products and articles. And in fact, this is probably the most um, the, the incorporation, not, not uh, <clears throat> putting down John Stone's important agri-food uh, issue or other or biomedical issue. But what we're seeing right now is uh, nanotechnology uh, being incorporated into consumer products and articles with which we contact every single day. Typically, these are classified as chemicals. And what is of interest is the unintended release or unintended use. Uh, and um, in order to manage the risks from those uh, issues, we have to look at... Uh, uh, what does risk management require? Namely, it requires sound risk assessments uh, which are interdependent upon effective risk communication strategies. The risk communication strategies have to work. Risk communication failures can be extremely costly. I think I'm preaching to the choir here, so I'm not going to uh, go into this uh, too much except to say that um, recalls, which uh, Dietrich already alluded to, um, and the uh, silver nanoparticle teddy bears, uh, um, and loss of trust, um, the, the recalls are have a monetary value themselves. Uh, the loss of trust, we don't have yet good uh, metrics in order to assess how costly that is, but I think in terms of GMOs, uh, it, uh, as an example, we certainly can say it has been extremely costly. And of course, uh, this is uh, what Dan, uh, Dan Ken uh, uh, mentioned, the societal fragmentation or polarization, if you will, uh, can also be very costly and quite um, disadvantageous. So with so much at stake, how can uh, risk management be successful without a proven evidence-based uh, risk communication approach, and that is in, indeed the, the issue uh, I see facing risk perception research currently. How can we translate, and I believe um, uh, it was already Susanna uh, Priest and also Dan Kane that mentioned that um, we've been at this now for uh, several decades. Why haven't we made much more progress towards helping uh, shape risk communication in such a manner that we can be more effective risk communicators. And I think that is the question and the answer is obviously we need some kind of tools and support immediately, right now, as we are not yet faced with a uh, communication crisis in the nanotechnology sector, but maybe. Uh, as, uh, as Dietram was pointing out, we're, going, we're looking at segmentation of the uh, nano-risk um, debates. Uh, this is pro going to even furthermore um, call for 
tools and support to help risk managers and decision makers to develop uh, effective risk communication strategies. So, in that, that light, uh, this project that I'm talking about uh, was a European Commission uh, project um, by the Health and uh, Consumer Protection DG, DG Sanko, and the European Commission's Joint Research Center uh, in addressing this challenge as part of their overall EIS chem risks program. Um, so, specifically, we looked at four tasks or four objectives uh, of our project um, and again this was more of a meta analysis a review to t to basically come up with a state of the art of where we are at right now and what we can do to further assist uh, risk managers and decision makers specifically in the area of uh, risks uh, from chemicals released from consumer products and articles. Well, the first task was to do a literature search, compile uh, an extensive literature database, and then we supplemented that with a questionnaire survey where uh, we con uh, conducted a survey to um, various key stakeholders in academia, public authorities, non-governmental organizations, and industry, and uh, it wanted to find out if there's great literature available and or uh, as well as wanted to find out well, what's insights and what's the pulse of uh, the feeling about the effectiveness of risk perception research and the results of risk perception research in shaping risk communication uh, specifically for the challenge of risk from chemicals released from consumer products and articles. So we then created uh, a risk perception reference database where we merged the two tasks uh, that I just mentioned and uh, finally developed a state-of-the-art report which has uh, just uh, in uh, beginning of summer been published. It has not yet been uh, uh, promulgated by the EC yet uh, and uh, it's been linked to a subsequent uh, Eurobarometer project which uh, will be uh, hopefully forthcoming by the end of this year. But let me uh, share with you already the results uh, that we have uh, uh, collected. Our main striking uh, result was that so far there is no bibliographic database that we were able to find that is specific to the topic of risk perception studies and applicable to risk communication about chemicals and consumer products and articles. Again, going back to the problem statement and what uh, previous colleagues have mentioned, this is where the crux of the uh, problem is. This is where the rubber meets the road, where we have to uh, move from knowledge or insights of risk perception research into helping, assisting, uh, developing better risk communication strategies. Well, what, what did we do? We looked at literature search uh, in various uh, typical uh, uh, online databases and uh, additional bibliographic resources that were freely accessible on the internet. Uh, we searched and grouped into four thematic areas and this is sort of the classification by which uh, we uh, operated and th that's why I'm showing this uh, a little bit more in detail. Uh, we looked at what's the general methodology to survey risk perception, uh, what, what's the state of, art, uh, state of the art there, what are the specific risk perception surveys on chemical risks, and thirdly, what uh, reviews are there on the current use of risk perception knowledge in risk communication and decision making related to the safety of chemicals, and do we have any papers out there, any thing that has already a plan of action in terms of specification of research and development needs. Some of our results are shown here. I won't bore you with that and given the lateness of uh, the day, I do want to move on. Uh, this is available in the final reports um, and I'll just